Hello there, I'm Colonel Failure and this is Train Fever. Uh, when you were last here, we were mucking around with trams as a, as a handsome deviation from the, the regular way that we escort passengers around town. Uh, it was entertaining enough, but that's not why we're here. The game is not called Tram Fever, it's called Train Fever. So, uh, so today we're going to go back to trains. Uh, just having a quick look at, uh, at the, uh, the financial progress of the tram. It is still costing us money at the moment. I mean, here we are in 1935, uh, and uh, we've still got a couple of lines. In fact, let's, uh, let's bring the lot up. Why the heck not? Um, we've got a couple of lines that are costing us way more than they're making. In fact, we're still running a few of these uh, old-style uh, Kanstadt uh, road goods delivery systems. They're all set up to, to replace themselves with proper trucks when the time comes. But, you know, they're, they're a little throwback to where we came from. Now, the big one for me is Tewkesbury Iron, which so far this year has cost me 340 grand. Uh, and uh, for those of you who tune in regularly, you will, you will know all well and good that that was because I had it waiting at the station for a full load. Right, let's go, uh, let's go give it a follow. So, I've just uh, I've just changed my position on that. Now I have read variously that uh, you can persuade factories to make more use of your well factories and, and kind of supply areas to make more use of your facilities if uh, yeah. uh, you uh, visit more often. So even though you might not be getting a full load, uh, simply by visiting more often, you will be uh, you'll be encouraging that factory to do more. And okay, I'm I'm down with that in principle, uh, and we're we're going to give it a spin. Uh, where is it? It's over here. But here's my problem: is uh, look at all this lovely iron ore here, and uh, it's all just it's, it's all going its own way. I I don't understand why it would uh, it would take this route when there is a, a perfectly good train set up to furnish its every possible need. Um. Anyway, maybe if we visit more often, that will sort itself out. Uh, Money-wise, generally, we're we're doing okay. Let's uh, let's bring up the the, the balance sheet here. Uh, you know, as you can see, we we've been making a profit every year. Um, it's it's now simply a question of turning those unprofitable lines into profitable ones, into to making sure that they are they are paying their way. Because uh, if we're if we're carrying kind of vanity vehicles uh, that's not going to serve us any purpose at all and when it comes down with it you know we're, we're trying to build a, uh, a magnificent network and we're only going to be able to do that if uh, if we're not hemorrhaging money where we don't need to I know uh, we're, we're still pursuing uh, the oil route the one truck oil route that we have going on and it's profitable uh, let's go find him here man trucks are loud okay let's let's Give it a little bit of a, a little bit of distance on this fella. Right, so this chap, he goes out all the way, and it's I mean it's a it's a really long way. What's he carrying at the moment? He's carrying two oil, good lad. Uh, he goes all the way out to this uh, refinery here, where he will pick up goods, of which there is one waiting, and drop it back in town to to generally help towards the the growth of Tewkesbury. Uh, and then he'll drive all the way over here, and you know this is not a not a quick route in the slightest, and pick up whatever oil is waiting there. Now I'm I'm hoping that uh, that by using him on regularly he might actually build up some demand. But frankly, while he's making a profit, I am quite happy for one truck to uh, to be against the world. One truck can make a difference, or something like that. Uh, in in far more profitable terms. We are, you know, we're we're doing very nicely for passengers. Our our train uh, passenger network is uh, is working really rather lovely. Really rather lovely. Yes, that's fantastic English. Um, yeah, it's doing well. I mean, what we're not doing yet is duplicating use of stations. So so we haven't got multiple trains going in the same direction. So we're not increasing frequency on lines, which is. Uh, the way that so often I would uh, I would come unstuck for, uh, for for profit in the in the early days is is simply replicating a train that was already there rather than adding more carriages. I mean, look, look at this. Look, three separate routes coming in and they all have passengers waiting. Fantastico. And uh, I mean, I think when we look at uh, 
the success stories. Bexhill is definitely one, and Haverhill is the other. Splendid. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Honestly, I hadn't thought, thought that far ahead. Um, you know, even even Ripon is uh, is now all over the, uh, the the powered transportation concept. Smashing. Okay, so last time, you know, we've been expanding, so we've, we're expanded into into Bromsgrove Grove for the Bex Broms Express, and here is the aforementioned tram. There we go, with one whole passenger on board. Well, you know, we'll live with that. There will be there will be more passengers in the future. There we go. People waiting for the train though, and that's a good thing. Right, okay, let's do something useful. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do? Oh, oh first things first, uh, we have had a name suggestion uh, for one of the trains. So, uh, there you go, the first train I identified. Train six no more, no. This is the Amusing Express. You are so dubbed, make me plenty of money, Amusing Express. Thank you to Mostly Amusing for that suggestion. You are now immortalized in, uh, in the form of a, an express train that, that runs between uh, Bexhill and, where are you going? Are you going Bromsgrove or are you going to Ripon? Uh, what's over there? Bromsgrove. Okay, right. Well, you get to go to Bexhill. You know, that's uh, the the jewel in the crown. All right, let's take a let's take a longer look here at uh, at exactly what we could be doing. Right, so we have this supply route, uh, which is, seems to be doing relatively well. And you're servicing, unless I am mistaken, you're servicing Ripon. Certainly, ah, uh, or are you? Or are you servicing Bexhill? Well, let's call up the routes thing and have a look. Do, 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 do. Ripon Circle, Haver, uh, Road, please. Thank you. No clues here. Haver Circle, Haver Coal. Well, you're nowhere. Where are you? Oh, there's Haver Hill. Forgive me, it's been a while since I set this up, so I, I've actually kind of almost forgotten where, where this stuff is going. Right, well, you're none of the circles. That much is certain. Haver Coal. Appears to be this route. Okay. So you're servicing Haver Hill. Right, so, I mean despite having a, a ripen in your in your mix but it is doing quite well and uh, um, if you recall the previous uh, kind of road goods line that was doing relatively well we were replaced with with trains and uh, and certainly for part of it it's now uh, it's now making me plenty of cash in fact let's have a quick a quick look at the cash situation there so Cheeksbury coal has made me 114 grand which is okay. Uh, Chicksbury Iron, however, has made me uh, a 560k loss. I am not thrilled about that. What is going on with this iron mine? Why is it not servicing the station? How many have we got? Like six. Well, six isn't too bad. And there doesn't appear to be anything on the road. Okay, maybe it's got the idea finally. Uh, let's just fast forward ever so slightly and see if all of that's going into the station. There we go. Okay, there, so that's that's proved out everything that I'd read, which is, if you want things to use the station, use the station more often. Uh, so even though you're picking up a light load with, a, uh, with your train, you are still going to uh, be better off in the long run by making use of it. Grand. Okay, we've got six million in the bank, and last time I recorded, we are we are free from debt. Train four has reached its lifetime. Golly. Okay. Well, that'll that'll give us something to do. Where are we? We're in the Haver Tukes Express. Okay. Right. Well, once you've dropped off, we'll send you back to the depot. Interesting. Okay, right. Well, let's, uh, let's 
slow it down just a smidge. Yes, apologies for the, the, the lack of, of direct action this episode. Um, as, as some of you have noticed, you know, I, I tend to record quite a few all in one go. And then when I come back, I can't remember what the heck I was doing. So, uh, this, is, this is my recovery episode. Here we go. Right, to the depot with you. Thank you. All right, so what are we going to replace it with? So here's the depot we should be visiting. Right, wow, we've got an A4. I mean, they are fast. They're not cheap. I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, the Mallard is something of, uh, of British train history here. So you've got the, the you've got, uh, what's the other, this red arrow. Oh, this is like a little, it's a bus on rails. Well, we won't be buying one of those. No, sir. Apparently it was very popular with the passengers. Uh-uh, not happening. That's a horrible, ugly looking thing. Or we could go with uh, another AE7. Yeah, lasts until 1953, it goes until 1957. I know it's expensive. But, but frankly, let's have it. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have ourselves a, a properly glamorous. All right, and what do we got on there? Three axle cars. <clears throat> okay, versus this compartment car. Or a BC4, which would appear to be the, uh, Yes, the BC4 is the most modern tech we have. So three of those, what's that? That's, uh, that's 36.54. Or one more, I'm making up 72. Right, we'll have four of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, hefty. Right, let's sell that. Uh, let's stick you on the Haver Cheeks Express. Off you trot. Most appealing. A goodly length number. Unfortunately, I think our stations are uh, are well and truly up to the task. Nice piece of streamlined British engineering. Okay, what have you got waiting? You got forty-eight waiting there. Just for my own my own benefit, let's see exactly how much space you end up with. Oh, okay, so you could probably easily take I don't know, double, triple that number of passengers if you chose to. Okay, just 23 for now. You will start paying for yourself sooner rather than later. It's also very, very fast. Well for this for this time in history 58 waiting good okay right so that uh, admittedly it's running costs are pretty high but it should turn into uh, into quite a nice little earner and then look look at all these goods look at all these goods seriously i've got trains for this oh and it's particularly harsh when it's coming from the oil well here where the, the, the solitary road vehicle is having no joy whatsoever in actually getting to pick anything up. It's just mean. Oh well. Iron ore finally picking up. Okay, right, I should have done that way sooner. Here we go, first arrival of the... Uh, of the A4. With coaches that are the height of luxury. 64 passengers on board. That's what I'm talking about. Excellent. Alright, let's, uh, let's, let's put a, 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 a plan in place. Let's stop mucking about and actually start looking at what we're going to do next. Train 3 has also reached its lifetime. Okay, right, well, off we trot. Let's, uh, let's sort in now as well. Where are you at the moment? You are on the Haverbanks. Hmm. Well, it's not electrified. So I think we could possibly A4 this one as well. And 
reluctant to do so. Typically, every time I buy a new train, there, there tends to be a, a, a brand new invention turn up not long after. But I think we're going to do it. And I think we're going to, uh, we'll probably chance, you know, maybe five or six coaches on this one. Right, turn around, and then I'll send you to the depot. Hopefully jolly well going. Yeah, so he's left leaving 15 passengers uh, behind, um, which is uh, which is a good argument for a, for a major upgrade here. Hopefully we can get through here without causing some kind of major incident. Excellent. Right then. Came into service in 1935. It's only 1937. So they, uh, you know, they were built until 1957. I think, I think we go for it. Okay, let's, uh, well, it's too late now, push the button. And then what are you packing there? What are those? Three axle cars again. Oh, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, ninety. Uh, what were you on? You were Haverbecks. Yes? Yes, you were. Right. Sell that one off. Okay, so, well, I mean, the... Uh, the rather luxurious amount of money that I was playing with is uh, is a thing of the past. Now, can we get out of here without bumping into someone? Did I do the right thing and actually put a signal on here? No, nope, this chap has just judged for himself that actually there's uh, there's nowhere for him to go. But that's okay, because, you know, he'll peel off onto this other line. Definitely going to need some signaling on there sooner rather than later. Well, it, it, at least if I... Uh, if I decide to start uh, being a little bit more professional about the way that my passenger services are running, so uh, so increasing their uh, uh, the capacity by adding more trains, or maybe be longer routes instead of running these simple kind of back and forth shuttles that we have been doing, 42 on board, it's not bad. Uh, and yes, instead of simply back back and forth shuttling, which has been our bread and butter to date, uh, something a little bit more. Uh, Long running, so uh, we're starting to get uh, an overall. In fact, what I might do is uh, I might draw a map of of the, the layout, so just a kind of uh, a stylized map, giving a, an indication of where we've got and where we're going. Introduce some arts and crafts into this video series. How many have we got waiting? 105 people waiting. Well, the good news is most of you are going to get on board. If the rest of you want to stand up while you're on board, suits the hell out of me. Loading them up. Marvellous. Okay, smashing. I think I'm going to round it off there for today, because uh, cause I, I still have some more exploring to do to figure out exactly what it is I want to do. Uh, so this has been more of a hello and have a tour of the railway uh, than, uh, than some actual progress. Uh, let's see if these lines have paid for themselves yet. Chewksbury Iron seems to be clawing its way back. What are you carrying? Ah, you're just about to turn up. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go give it a look. There we go. Load her up, please. One, two, three. That's good. Four. Yes. Ah, four and a half cars. All right, smashing. That that really has started to pay for itself. Grand. Um, one quick look at that. So if we look at the the, the income that we're making, we're 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 hovering around the the kind of the mid six million per year. Uh, which isn't great in terms of, of paying for expensive new trains, but uh, as long as I haven't got to buy expensive new trains every year, well, let's actually see this chap doing his thing, um, then that will allow my, my balance to build up. But uh, as you know, it always cost me an absolute fortune to expand anywhere because 
I do it five times rather than measuring once and then doing it a single time. Um, yes, good. Uh, and here's the scores on the doors as far as population is concerned. Bexhill, number one. Haverhill, number two. Ripon, number three. Tewkesbury, number four. All of our favourite places. Bromsgrove, go with the programme. Still, 469, I've heard that the, uh, the achievement you want to set yourself is having 500 population by the year uh, 1900. Uh, quite how you go about doing that, I've no idea. But maybe I'll set myself that as a, as a challenge in a subsequent playthrough. Anyway, that will wrap it up for today. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment if you've got an idea as to what I could do next. I've got a few ideas, but I'm always uh, happy to hear yours. Uh, stick a like, because it helps more people find the video in the first place, despite the fact this hasn't been the most riveting one ever. Um, and I'll catch up with you next time. Thank you very much. Cheerio.